We make music, but did music make us? More on today's BFD. As much as music has changed our culture, at the same time our very culture can often change music. It's a complex system that makes our music a reflection of our history, as well as a gateway of things to come. I know, it's a lot to wrap your head around. Thankfully, there's a whole area of academic study devoted to tracing our music in the context of culture, society, and its biological or cognitive effects. It's called ethnomusicology, and it's also known as the major I should have taken in college. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Timothy D. Taylor, who is a professor of just that over at UCLA. So Tim, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. What are some ways that music has changed our world? Music or like video games or whatever, they don't really change things. I would say that they're part of changes that are going on sort of deeper in the culture, but often a really important part. I mean, you know, we, the 60s without the popular music that we remember from the 60s would be unthinkable. I mean, I teach the 60s a little bit in one of my classes, and, you know, the students, they really are invested in the notion that this genius produced this great piece or, you know, this great song. It's like, well, yeah, but this genius lives in a culture, you know, and lives in a historical moment. And let's talk about that because that historical moment shapes everything we do. You know, culture shapes everything we do, everything we think. But I use the word shape on purpose. You know, it doesn't determine what we do and what we think, but it powerfully shapes what we do and what we think. So you've actually written several books on this issue and music and its effect on capitalism. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I spent a fair amount of time interviewing people in the indie rock scene here in Southern California. And it was really interesting because a lot of them are trying to make a living as a musician, but outside the realm of the commercial, you know, commercial music world. In one case, Burger Records in, in Orange County is putting out cassettes. Um, really? Yeah. Um, Why? Partly nostalgia. <laughs> partly, I think they're, they're thumbing their nose at all these new technologies. You know, it's like, why do you need to have the latest iPhone? Just, you know, go to the thrift store and get an old, get a cassette player. I'm just trying to think of what, uh, like, a friend of mine would say to me if I'm like, dude, you got to check out this new band and hand them a cassette tape. Like, I feel like they're going to look at me like I'm crazy because I haven't done that in, like, 15 years. <laughs> I think that's part of what they're about. They, they want people to do a little work to hear their music. You yeah. Know? Only one of their acts was on iTunes. So most of the stuff, most of their music is not digitally available. I don't think we'll ever get rid of capitalism, but we'll never also get rid of people's desire to, to make music and to hear music that they want to hear, you know. Thank you so much, Tim, for joining us. It's my it was... pleasure. Thanks for having me. Check out Tim's work in the links below, and while you're there, check out 10 more musicians with a message, their songs, and their stories in our new series, Eye Level, right here on Take Part TV. For BFD, I'm Marisha Ray. Don't forget to subscribe. Mm -hmm.